So just another quick tutorial here, and this time on different methods for UV mapping a sphere in Maya. Okay, so we have a few different UV options available to us, um, and I'll take you through each of them and we can kind of work out which might be the best. Um, now to get an idea of what this actually looks like when it is has been UV mapped and whether or not the texture has been applied to it correctly, I'm going to go ahead and create and apply a texture to it now. So I'll just go assign new material. I'm just right click and hold, assign new material, and I'll choose a Lambert. Lambert is your plain base matte material, um, very, very dull. And to assign a texture to this, I just need to click on this little white and black checker box next to the color field and go to file. And that gives me this file node, which allows me to choose a file anywhere on my computer. Um, if you for lose this for whatever reason, let's say you, like, you click away and you're like, how do I get back to this again? You just need to select the sphere, and where it says Lambert 2 up here at the top, and if you can't see what I'm seeing, you just want to be clicking on the attribute editor. So where it says Lambert 2, go down the color, and you'll see that there's a little um, black arrow next to the color field. If you click on that, that lets you know that there is currently a file or some kind of node being attached to this. So if you click on that little black arrow, that takes you back to your file node, and then you can click on this folder here and then navigate to your desktop. And uh, I now have that little smiley face. Now I can't see anything in the viewport because I currently have um, default shading on, but if I hit 6 on my keyboard, you'll see I now have <laughs> that smiley face mapped to my sphere. Um, now what's a bit strange about this is if I actually um, bring that image over, you'll see that this is sitting quite strangely on my sphere. So here's the actual texture I've just assigned to it. Um, and you'll see that on the sphere, it's kind of bug-eyed a little bit and it's sitting a bit weirdly. If I go up to UV and UV editor, I can see that, well, for one thing, my texture is actually quite stretched. Um, so that's not coming in quite clean. And you can see uh, the faces on my sphere. It's basically, here's what's wrong about this. In the UV space, they're perfectly square faces, but in 3D space, you see they're actually rectangular in most cases, and of course, in some points, they actually uh, they narrow quite severely, but in the UV space, they still look square. Uh, the rule of thumb is for your UVs that your UVs in 3D space and your UVs in UV space should always look re relatively the same, if it's this rectangular shape here in 3D space, it needs to be that same rectangular space shape in 2D space. So um, let's see what some of our different options are. If I just select all the faces on my sphere and I go up to UV and automatic mapping, Ooh, that's, this is quite messy, I don't, I don't like using this, but I just want to see what's going to happen. I'll hit apply. Oh my god. It just went all over the place. So automatic mapping will automatically break up your um, your sphere into a bunch of different parts. And a bunch of those different parts, while their shapes are much more accurate to the actual sphere, you'll see it's given me a lot of really random shells. And I can come in here and I can like adjust this and have that, that show up the way I'd like it to. But... Um, uh, like I'd have to actually go through and start stitching these all back together again because you can see it's got some really weird things happening all over the place, man. Another method of UV mapping um, is actually to do, like we can do spherical mapping. So once again, we'll just grab all those faces and we'll go up to UV and we'll go spherical options. Um, I don't think there's actually anything for us to play with there. We'll hit project. And what that's given us, you'll see that it gives us pretty much the same result we had before. I can see half of a sphere right now. Um, it's got some weird stuff happening up here. And if I actually want to wrap that sphere all the way around my object, I need to grab these little, little red handles on the side here and drag those over. And again, it's given us part of the result, but still looks pretty funny like you can see where you've got some weird stretching happening up here and up at the bottom and of course the image um, like the, the size of my face is 
in 3D and 2D there's such a huge disparity that the image is completely squished one way or the other. I can try and clean that up a bit. So if I select my UVs in the UV editor here and I go to uh, Polygon's Unfold Options, um, we'll just see what it looks. Let's see what happens if I do Unfold Legacy or just Unfold 3D, and I'll hit Apply and Close, and you see that that's what that's done is it's tried to unfold that in a way that's a little bit more realistic to the shape of the sphere. If I increase those. You can see that um, I can, by increasing those UVs, I can adjust how many, f how often the face shows up, how large the face shows up, for example. Um, <laughs> it's so cool. But it's, you know, it's still not necessarily totally perfect. In fact, if you look at the back here, <laughs> it's just all kinds of wrong. So let's say what I actually want is what I actually want is to have exactly the same image on one side as on the other. I want a, a total reflection, perfectly reflected. So one thing I can do is I can actually let us um, let it to actually just delete half of that sphere and make sure that we've actually got all those faces deleted. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a planar projection. So that's just a planar projection projects for just one axis and I'll go um, wherever, whatever is perpendicular to the Z axis here. So uh, Z is our blue arrow. So I'll just go UV, planar, options. There's a couple things I want to make sure are on here. So for one, I want my Z axis. So I'm projecting along the Z axis. And I want to make sure that keep image with height ratio is on. That will, that will maintain the sort of shape of my sphere. And I'll just hit apply. And you'll see that what I've got now is a fairly clean projection of my UVs. And if I select those UVs now, um, and I go up to polygons and unfold, that'll give me a fairly clean, like you're, you're, you can see here that the, the shape of my face um, in 3D and 2D is looking pretty similar and you can see that th my faces are now the integrity of the shape of my faces is much closer so where they look um, in 3D space quite uh, rectangular they're looking pretty similar in UV space so that's what I'm after that's really the result I want and so to ensure that like I've got this sphere that now has exactly the same, precisely the same UVs on one side to the other, all I have to do at this point is now mirror this across and it will retain those UVs. So if I go up to mesh and mirror options, um, I probably want to mirror, I'm not quite sure which one is going to be the best option for me, so I might just experiment a bit. Um, let's go mesh, mirror, options, and I think I want to mirror across the Z and negative, because like wherever the arrow is pointing that's positive. I want to combine it with the original, I definitely want to merge those those vertices. Um, I'm not going to flip UVs, I'm going to leave that as they are. I'll hit mirror. And what I've got now is I actually have this perfectly mirrored sphere, and if I open up my UVs, it actually looks like I still only have half of the UVs mapped. But that's just because the other half now have precisely the same mapping. So whatever image I put on one side is going to automatically show up on the other side quite cleanly. So there you go, that's how you can get a perfect perfect reflection and have uh, the same image reflected on one side of the sphere to the other side of the sphere um, perfectly mapped across. And of course you could do something very similar by just uh, mapping a quarter of that sphere and duplicating that around. So there you go. That is uh, different ways of UV mapping a sphere in Maya.